Let's talk about testing security controls. Periodic testing is critical, especially if there's a change to your topology, to your design, to your technologies, to your major configuration. It should be part of your established change in configuration management. You can use ITIL for that, or you can reference COBIT-5, or you can reference ISO IEC 27001 and 27002. Now, there's four main control areas here for testing security. First is the control placement. For example, where are the controls placed? Is it a layered defense in depth solution? Do you need redundancy or at least hot spares? Are they at all the zone interface points, okay? Are the controls at all of your ingress and egress points? And what about the borderless issues? Maybe you've got cellular uh, CAT 1M from Verizon. Maybe you've got wireless, satellite, Bluetooth, infrared. So think about control placement. Also, what about control effectiveness and efficiency? Is it effective, reliable? Is it broadly deployed? Is your security control too stringent? Is it negatively affecting productivity and interoperability? Do you have real-time monitoring and analysis? Also, is the control a single point of failure? And do you have least privileged principles in place? Then there's control policy. Is the control restrictive or permissive? For example, a restrictive firewall versus a permissive IPS. Is it a fail open or a fail closed policy? Are you enforcing your AUPs? Also, is everything policy aligned and business aligned? And then finally, there's control implementation. Is the implementation according to adequate testing? Is it automated? Do you have automated self-protecting controls like firewalls and IPS? Do you have proper alerting, alarms, and logging? Also, are you leveraging cloud services, user behavioral analytics, AI, and machine learning algorithms? Let's look at some uh, testing of security controls and realize that these tests also can be applied to disaster recovery scenarios, okay? So let's start with the checklist review. Okay, a checklist review is a preliminary to the real test where you would distribute checklists to all the team members or the control stakeholders. And then of course, go through it and get feedback and reporting on that. There's also tabletop exercises. Tabletop exercises are typically for disaster recovery and business continuity, but we could also use them for security controls, services, and app testing. Basically, a tabletop exercise is the initiation of the process or the control. And then we take the information from the checklist review and we kind of implement that into our tabletop exercise. So rather than actually simulating a scenario, your team will gather for several hours to talk through the simulated situation. So this could be applied to, you know, deploying a firewall solution or a BYOD solution, okay? It could just be a simple tabletop exercise of scenarios. In a structured walkthrough, each group will evaluate each step in the existing paper plans or the pseudocode by going through each step and analyzing the completeness and effectiveness to identify gaps, necessary changes, constraints, and possible weaknesses. A simulation test is basically role-playing a scenario. For example, ransomware, or a DDoS, or a botnet attack, a data breach from an insider, or disaster recovery. A parallel test is often used in disaster recovery planning, where you're gonna bring up your cold site or your warm site or your hot or your mobile site or your shared site, but it's in parallel. Your remaining organization is, is still operational and still running throughout the scenario and the drill. Finally, we have the full interruption test. And in, in case of business continuity, this is actually rarely done because you're doing a full interruption where you're bringing down the original site okay, or the original department that's been affected by the ransomware, let's say, and totally disrupting the business. So it's rarely done because of the cost and the disruption to productivity and business continuity. But in a nutshell, if you could afford 
to do a full interruption, regardless of the control you're testing or regardless of disaster recovery, it is the most effective type of test. When you have a chance, go check out www.fema.gov for more testing and scenario-based exercises. Let's talk about color team exercises, okay? We have red teams and we have blue teams. The red and blue teams are the two main players in a cybersecurity or penetration testing event. The red team is basically emulating the actions and the techniques of the likely crackers in the most realistic way possible. They're trying to find a way into the network into the sensitive resources while the blue team is trying to discover them and keep them out, okay? So they should be distinguished from the standard security team in most organizations. In most organizations, uh, as most security operations teams don't have a group of dedicated individuals that are constantly being vigilant against attacks, unless maybe it's a military environment or a really high security research, the mission and perspective of a blue team may just be certain security individuals that are playing that role. Now, in going through the subtopics of the CASP series, CompTIA mentioned what's called the white team. To be honest with you, I'm not even really familiar with that real world entity, okay? I suppose that they're referring to white hat hackers or ethical computer hackers who specialize in pen testing and other methodologies. So. Maybe they're referring to white hat hackers that we typically call sneakers, okay? And there's also, in addition to red teams, we have what are called tiger teams. You may also hear the phrase purple teams, okay? A purple team may be used to ensure and maximize the effectiveness of both the red team exercises and the blue team exercises.